and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the case of Elvin Nungari. Not much is known about her, not even the suspect as well. She described as a 23-year-old um, young woman who was working as a waitress at Ruiru Destiny Park. And the suspect, Joseph King Omarimi, is also... Not much is known about him, even his face, we're not sure. Um, not much is known about this guy. He is described as a salesperson. So Joseph Kenyua Murimi, he met Valvin Nungari at Ruru Destiny Park, where she was working, you know, as a waitress, as we've said before. He asked her out on a date and, you know, she agreed. And they set the date for the 23rd of February 2021. That day came and they met up. He picked her up at Kirigiti and they first went to Key West restaurant at Kahawa West for drinks. They then went to Kijita restaurant on Kamiti Road before ending up at you know, ending the night at Sinot Hotel where they had booked a room. Apparently at Sinot Hotel, Joseph Kenyo Murimi is a regular there. Now, while still out and about, while they were still going on about their night, Valvin had spoken to her friend at around 7.55pm and told her where she was and promised to call her as soon as she arrived home. She also asked her friend to call her if anything were to happen to her and maybe she wasn't responding. She asked the friend to call her as well. Now, back at the hotel. A CCTV at the reception area caught Velvin and Joseph, you know, they were getting the key to their room. They seemed okay in each other's presence. Both were drunk, but were not too drunk. I mean, they were quite sober, essentially. They could walk up the stairs or they could walk uh, all the way up to, you know, where they wanted to go. So they were quite, they were drunk, but not too drunk. So they went to their room and now what happened in the room is what is up for debate but half an hour later joseph would be ushered out by one of the attendants and he would tell the attendant that he's a married man and couldn't spend the night there and that he had left velvin to rest in there as you know she was exhausted you know from the night out and also that the room was unlocked he told this to the attendant i don't know now if he's volunteering this information to the you know to the attendant without you know the attendant asking i'm suspicious here because it seemed like he's quite building quite an alibi and a defense already now when he left you know the room he did something quite odd here he took valvin's phone with him now why did he take the phone with him it's valvin's phone this is the first time they're going out on a date so why did this man take valvin's phone was he trying to erase their conversation was he stealing from Velvin? I mean, I've heard of stories where people with cars actually attack people who walk. I mean, you're a person with a car. Why are you going for someone who is walking um, on the streets? So definitely, you know, the, you're at a better position in life, but you're stealing from someone who is, you know, at a different state in their life. I mean, th that's what boils my mind here. You have a car, but you're stealing a phone. Why did he leave with Velvin's phone? That's my biggest question here. Now, from what happens to Velvin later, taking the phone delayed or denied Velvin getting the help that she needed as soon as possible, you know. So it, it definitely, let's say, if he, I don't know if he's involved directly, but I'm pretty sure he's involved indirectly in causing, you know, her injuries to even advance further because he took the phone. If Velvin had the phone, she would be able to call anyone to for assistance, but this guy took the phone. So... Yeah, he went away with the phone that night. Now, the next day in the afternoon, Velvin was able to get hold of a phone and call her friend to come get her. The friends got there and they said that they found Velvin in a very strange state. They found Velvin naked on the bed, face down, and she couldn't move. She was hurt, so they helped her and then, then they took her to a hospital. Now, one report says that the manager called Joseph, you know, the guy who was with Velvin. They called him and he came back and drove Velvin's, uh, Velvin and the friend to the hospital. I can't confirm this, so I don't know how she got to the hospital. But regardless, she called a friend and she was taken to the hospital. That's it. At the hospital, they found out that Velvin had a very serious injury to her back. She had a compression on her vertebral column, which caused her lungs eventually to collapse. Now, the doctors got to work on her immediately. Now, as she was in the hospital, her friends went to Kiamumbi police station and filed a report. 
and they accused Joseph of sexually assaulting Valvin. I'm not sure whether the friends were told by Valvin to go or whether they went on their own accord. It's not clear here. He was arrested and, you know, charged and then released on a hundred thousand shillings bond. Now, sadly, at the hospital, Velvin's condition would deteriorate over a few days and he would end up passing away. After it was confirmed that Velvin had passed away, Joseph was then arrested and charged with murder. Now, the case is still undergoing, you know, is still under investigation as up to uh, this point. Now, what's up for debate here is what happened in the bedroom, what really happened in that room at Sinot Hotel. So her friends and family accused Joseph of assault. They even filed a report. So there's something there. I mean, they wouldn't file a report without, you know, Volvin not telling. They wouldn't file a report just because for the sake of it. Or are they trying to twist the story here to run a specific story that actually, you know, is just uh, different. What would they gain by lying about Velvin's case? I don't know. But they filed a report. So there must be something there. He must have done something to her. But then again, that those who are going to argue that she went with this man willingly. Because if you look at the CCTV, Velvin doesn't seem panicked or threatened. She, feel, she looks fine. They, she felt safe around this man. You know, it's unclear what really her expectations were while going there to the room. But yeah, she goes with this man to the hotel room willingly. And those, those who um, are going to latch on to this argument that possibly there is something a bit different with this case because she went with this man willingly uh, to the hotel room. But I would like to say something here. She might have gone with this man willingly. But then again, maybe in the room she felt different. She didn't want to engage in any... Um, intimate um, uh, relations with this man he maybe she she wanted uh, something different maybe she thought she, she was gonna go rest there or maybe her, she changed her mind if you changed her mind about what they were going to do the man should have respected that now it all comes down it all boils down to consent did she actually give her consent if it wasn't and that's why she filed the report then he did something and he needs to be charged for it he should face the consequences for it what happened to the room is not known only Joseph and Valvin can tell us that but uh, sadly Valvin isn't here to tell her her side but Joseph is here and I'm hoping that the police actually investigate this I have big questions about what really happened in that be bedroom I'd really like to know what really happened and I'm hoping that the police get to the bottom of this. Another thing here is why did he take off with Velvin's phone? What was he trying to hide? What was in Velvin's phone that he didn't want other people to know about? What was he hiding? Why did he take off with the phone? Was he, was he trying to rob Velvin of her belongings? What really happened or was he trying to deny her help after she was hurt? That's my biggest question here. So I'd really like to know big questions here. What happened in the room? Why did this man run away with Valvin's phone? While investigating this case, I came across an article which uh, took a different angle and I thought I should um, go over it a little. And I want to apologize um, if it sounds a bit... Um, awful it definitely sounds awful and i want to apologize for that um, but please do note that these are not my words they're from the article i'm going to link the article down below if you want to do further reading in it go there and it definitely has elicited some um backlash but it kind of gives a different angle and i thought i should include it here it's not facts it should not be taken as fact but it's just a different side to the story apart from the one that was already told and i would like to stress that this are just articles the speculations that they shouldn't be taken as fact the article kind of analyzes um, or gives you uh, the tools to analyze Velvin's case uh, for you to know whether it was actually an assault or was it something else. And uh, first it gives you, um, at first it gives you an idea of what uh, is 
what constitutes murder it is an intention to kill someone or having that intention to you know harm someone so that's what murder is that is me paraphrasing but it definitely goes in deeper if you want to do further research please do so generally that is what it means uh, having an intention to harm someone so to Belvin's case did this person have the intention of murdering her we can't be sure of that what we're sure of is that it, possibly he could be indirectly responsible for Belvin's death because taking away the phone definitely caused um, injuries her injuries to advance maybe he could have had the intention of harming her that night but we cannot be sure so further investigation needs to be done for us to understand whether actually he intended to harm Belvin causing her death so we have to definitely look at that that's what the article uh, tries to bring forth that you have to look at the whole picture here we shouldn't jump at the bandwagon saying yes he wanted to murder her when we can't really be sure his phone should be forensically analyzed and you know we need to see whether he was googling something whether he was searching for something to harm someone or what was his intentions really we really need to look at that um, how he set up things and then leaving through the night with Velvin's phone definitely everything needs to be looked at so that we can know what his intentions were that night another thing the article um, analyzes or uh, talks about is assault okay the big question here assault was it really actually an assault and here it gives a bit of a turn it suggests that joseph really had the intention of um having an intimate time with valvin in that hotel room it's unclear what really valvin's intentions or expectations were when they went into the room but it definitely clearly says that joseph had the intention of actually having relations with valvin that night that's why he went with her to the hotel right uh, but then again, it gives you, um, uh, for you to be able to objectively look at the whole picture, it suggests that you have to look at, in terms of an assault, you have to look at um, consent. Did Velvin have uh, the ability to consent to what was going to happen in the room? Did she actually agree to what was happening or what was going to happen in the room? When you look at an assault case, uh, the victim ha was possibly forced into the situation. The victim also was denied, you know, was deprived of the decision making in what was going to happen. So is it really the case with this one? It looks at how Velvin was acting uh, during the last footage that we saw of her um, with this man in the lobby. So it looks at that, it definitely says that yes, she might have gone with this man willingly, but you have to look at consent. Was she really uh, able to consent to what was going to happen? She completely drunk, did she black out? Was she drugged by this man? Was she hit with something? How was consent obtained? So in terms of an assault cases, you just don't jump onto the bandwagon and say, it definitely is an assault. You have to look objectively at all other areas. Um, you look, have to look at um, the big thing here, you have to look at consent. And that's my biggest question. What really happened in that room? And fortunately, we can't have love inside, but Joseph is the only other person we have to uh, listen to what he has to say and it's quite annoying really because we only have one side and humans have the ability to lie so we can't know the full story but then again what the article is trying to show you is how you're supposed to look at the case in general before you say that it's an assault case you should look at the whole picture and look did she actually give her consent was it consensual so it gives you that um, an idea of how you're supposed to look at the case First, you have to look at murder, what really constitutes murder. And you have to ask yourself, did this man intend on killing Valvin that night? We don't know that. We can't be sure of that. But through investigation, we can find out what we really wanted to do that night. Number two, consent. Did Valvin give her consent to what was going to happen? And if that's the case, then 
what next for the case you know and if not if that's not the case you know he should definitely pay for it you have to look at a whole you know slew of things before you conclude that it was actually an assault number three it definitely goes into her injury her back injury here gives a very different suggestion it says that possibly her her back injury could have um, she could have suffered that back injury while they were engaging in their relations in the room if you know what i mean uh, they were engaged in that and she was pulled by um you know by the shoulder towards the back and she hurt her back and that's how she got that injury but that's a very severe injury i've looked into her injury and article suggests that her injury is a very serious injury that is similar to that of a car of a person involved in a car accident or a serious fall so it's a very extreme injury for that to happen because she was pulled by the back and i don't know but that is what the article is trying to suggest that possibly this is what uh, could have happened that she went there she gave her consent she got that injury while they were in there that's it uh, and and that is when um that is when valvin filed the report against this man but i don't know really that's a very serious injury to have on your back very serious it's an extreme injury and there are articles which say that there could be injuries caused by uh sexual relations extreme sexual activity but they're very rare they're there but very rare and hers is quite significant it's quite a very uh, awful injury on her back serious similar to that of a car accident it's very extreme for you to get such an injury while being i don't know but that's what the article is trying to say i've seen other people accusing this man who published the article of justifying assault but i don't know it just gives you a different angle to look at the whole case but because we have possibly to look at the whole case her case is very confusing to me i just don't understand why she would go with this man and then file a report later i don't get the whole situation there but i definitely think that a lot has to lie uh with um her injuries to the back how did she get her injury number two what was the intention of this man number three why did this man run away with a phone and number four um did she give her consent if she said no this man should have respected it and walked away and if he didn't um respect that and this is what he did to Falfin, he should definitely pay for um should definitely face the consequences for it that's it's a very confusing case and i'm sorry if, if whatever i've said is not clear enough but we've been through the whole um story it's uh, so many questions no enough answers but at this point it's still under investigation if there's any conclusion definitely i'm going to update you on what really happened to velvin i'm very suspicious of this guy let me say because of what he did later he went he took off with velvin's phone that's what I'm really concerned about. Why did he do that? Why did he leave early? And um, give, giving us um, a very flimsy alibi that, oh, he's a married man. He can't be there. It's, it, I'm really concerned about this guy. He definitely should be looked into more. That is me saying this clearly. Definitely should be looked into more. There's definitely something suspicious here. And at the end of the day, we have to look at whether there was consent obtained and how was it obtained was it through uh, force or was it through uh, drugging was it through uh, her being hit by something we have to look at all the other aspects and we have to ask yourself at the end of the day what really happened um, to Velvin we have to really be objective about it and really find out what really happened there so that's it and i'm sorry if the article upset you yeah it definitely is a different angle i'm sorry if it upset you and i really do apologize for that it just gives you a different perspective because this case is a very it's not a very straightforward case very confusing 
but at the end of the day we will get to know whether he was guilty or not he will be proven guilty or not in the courts of uh, law so that's what we're looking forward to at the moment but that is the case of the Vins, a very confusing case i still don't get it myself and i'm sorry and apologize if it doesn't make sense to you as well but i do apologize for that i want to say that some of these things i've said are not my words none of this should be taken as fact it's just speculation pure speculation and that's it i mean that is the case of a very confusing case really uh, that's it that's all i have for you today thanks for listening